All right, welcome back, guys. This is Ivan from BrainyBiz.com. And t if you saw our last video, uh, we showed you how to read the values from an RC receiver and uh, with a Nuno. And what we're going to show you today, we're going to show you how I built these uh, pen and tilt uh, with zoom capabilities uh, to help us do our videos. And uh, we're going to go through the parts today, how what everything, uh, what it includes, basically. Then I'm going to show you what's in this uh, top box here. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. There you go. As you can see, I'm controlling that camera now. Uh, we have two of these that we built. So there you go. So this is the little enclosure that has the uh, Nano inside. And if we pan down a little bit, this guy is an S um, HDMI to SDI converter. Let me show you. So the SDI cable comes out of the camera goes into this converter here, and then we're connecting an SDI cable. Uh, why SDI? Well, HDMI has, you know, about 15 feet of length for an, H an HDMI cable is pretty much uh, the maximum you'll get, unless you get very good cables and repeaters and all that, and that can get costly. Uh, SDI cables, in, in theory, can go up to 300 meters if you're using a good cable. Of course, we don't need that much, but for us, using an SDI cable like this permits us to actually place the cameras whenever, wherever we want. Uh, we got this little guy here at Amazon. This little box was like 50 bucks. So it's not that expensive and it's very useful if you want to uh, go a longer distance than HDMI will enable you to do. Uh, so we're going to go from the bottom down, uh, the bottom up. So let me go down a little bit. So what we're using here is a little pan and tilt module made by Bestcore. It's the MP101. And this guy is pretty good. I mean, the exterior is plastic, but this thing is really heavy. I mean, all the gearing inside and all that, it's all metal. And it will support up to six pounds. Now, our camera setup that we're using on top of this, we're using the uh, Vixia's, uh, the Canon Vixia's G20 uh, camcorders. And these guys have an HDMI out, and they also have a LENC port. And a LANK port enables you to actually zoom in, zoom out, adjust focus with a remote. And basically that, that's what we did here. We bought a cheap remote uh, that's from uh, Bank B-E-N-C, LANK remote. I think it was like 30 bucks. And you can see an image on the, on the screen now. And what we did is that we opened it and soldered connection directly. So from the uh, Nano that we have inside our box here, uh, we can actually simulate pushing buttons, and I'm going to show you how we did that um, later on. So these cameras, you know, they enable us to do that. Now on the other side here, I'm powering most of this stuff from uh, this battery here. It's an XT Power. It's, uh, I think it's a 10,000 milliamp battery. And what's cool about this battery is that it has, of course, like, everybody, like all these batteries, two USB outs, up to two amps, but it also has a little... Let me see here, here. A little DC plug that you can select the voltage from nine volt, well, not from, it's nine volt or 12 volts, and you can output power and all at the same time. Now, the nine volt that we're using, it's to power this little box here, the little converter. So the power connection goes from this to the battery and supplies it with nine volt. And also we could power the camera with this. Now, the only thing I've noticed uh, these cameras, the adapter that comes with it, the AC adapter, is rated at 8.4 volts. Now, I did try powering the camera with this, and it does work. We're getting 9 volts, and the camera works, but it will not charge the battery. Because the battery that are included in these cameras are 8.4 volts, and if it detects that you're putting more in, into the, the camera, the battery won't charge. Uh, most electronics have a tolerance. Uh, you know, I, I always go with 10%. Uh, about of voltage, uh, voltage tolerance, uh, maybe 5% would be better. So it asks for 8.4, it will work on 9, but these cameras aren't really cheap. So basically you don't want to push it too high and destroy the camera basically by putting in too much uh, voltage. So what I'm probably going to do, I'm going to build a little box that's going to go between this and the camera, and I'm going to put a step down converter that's going to go from 9 volt to 8.4 volt, which is which is what it wants, and then I'll be able to actually have almost a setup that's wireless, except for the SDI cable at the top. 
Now, if I wanted to go full wireless, then I would need a, a, wife, um, a wireless HDMI box. Uh, but these are really pricey right now. I mean, uh, Teradek makes the best ones, the Bolt and all that, but you're talking thousands of dollars for one, one setup. So this little box is 50 bucks, so basically we don't mind having one cable. But everything else could be powered by this battery here. And the MP101, of course, uses batteries. So basically, it's uh, four AA, and it lasts, whoop, let me go down a little bit so you can see it. There we go. So it's four AA's, and it lasts quite a long time, actually, because when you're using these, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna move it, but you're not gonna move it constantly. So the batteries are lasting in this fairly well. Uh, so what we're gonna do today, we're actually gonna show you what's inside the big box at the top and how we made the connections. Let me just go up here. There we go. Oop, the other way. So we're gonna show you what's in here and how we made all these connections. Now the video is gonna be probably long because of all this explanation. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna explain this today and tomorrow or Saturday, we will look at the code that makes all this stuff works. So let's cut here. Let me open this box up and let's see what's inside. All right, so welcome back. I opened the, uh, the box and now we can see the, uh, <laughs> the horrible job I did of wiring all this stuff up. Uh, so don't you guys laugh. I mean, I'm sure you could do a way better job than I did here. Uh, basically what I wanted, I wanted all this stuff to be um, modular. So if any of these parts fail, I could just replace them uh, without having to uh, desolder and uh, unsolder anything. So basically I'm using mini breadboards for all these parts. And we're gonna go through all the parts really quickly. This is the receiver that we saw in the last video. Uh, the receiver is being powered directly from the uh, Nano right here. And the Nano is being powered by the battery right here with the USB port. After that, we have our connector. Let me see if I can, yeah, this guy. And this guy goes to the best core MP101. And we got four pins. And basically all this does is sends, we put the pin high to actually activate the left, right, up, down. And you'll see on the screen right now the connections uh, that I use to actually control the MP101. And the connector that you see on the screen right now, this represents the connector on the best core, not the connector that goes into the best core. If you want to do your own cable, then you reverse, but sometimes we get confused that the connector on the, uh, on the best core and the connection that we're doing, uh, you got to make sure that the pins, if you get it wrong, basically they'll, they'll, they'll be inversed. So that's the way we're controlling the pan and tilt, just by putting the pins high and putting them low when we, uh, when we stop. Uh, this is the remote actually that I was talking about, the bank, bank link remote. Uh, this little remote is like 30 bucks. Uh, I could have programmed maybe the link uh, protocol using the Uno, but I didn't want to do that. It seemed flaky and you know, it would have taken a lot of time. Uh, so basically I just bought this remote and the little pot at the top here controls the speed of the zoom. So I just set it to something that was in the medium range. And then you have these two buttons here, which are the zoom. So basically all I did, whoop, let me go. Uh, all I did is I soldered two wires and this goes to this chip here, which is the MC14066B. And this little guy acts as a switch. Uh, basically all the, how this works is that I have two wires coming from the Uno, uh, the uh, Nano, that will simulate key presses. So if I put one of these pins high, then it will connect these two, is as if I was clicking on a button. And that's a great little chip if you wanna you know, take a remote and control it uh, with a Nano, because basically it simulates pressing buttons. And these little chips are, re are really cheap. I think they're, I paid like 50 cents for each one of these. And they're very easy to use. So if you look at the uh, diagram I have on the screen right now, you'll see how the connections are made. And let me just pull it up too so I can talk to you about it. There it is. So basically there's a voltage and ground. So voltage is here, ground is, is there. And you can, con you can simulate four key presses by just putting each of the control pins high and they will actually activate like buttons. Uh, so, and you can have multiple of these if you want to control more than four buttons. So this is a great chip if you want to achieve that. 
So basically all this does that my nano, when it received, when it receives the value from the uh, transmitter to zoom in and out, it actually put these pins high or low to actually simulate pressing these buttons here. After that, uh, yeah, well, that's about it. That's, uh, that's all the stuff that's in the box. Uh, so basically when it receives information from the transmitter, it takes those values and decides what it wants to do, depending on the channel it's on. So if it's on channel two or one, it will move the head, pan and tilt. And if it's the zoom function, then it will send signals to this chip to simulate pressing buttons on this remote. So there you go. You know, I like to keep it simple. Uh, I could have done this a lot better. I could have, like I said, simulate the length protocol and all that. But I like the simple stuff. And, you know, once the cover is on, you can't really see the mess of wire that's in here. So there you go. So that's the, uh, the whole system. So we're going to switch back to the main camera now and do a conclusion on all this stuff. All right, guys, so that'll do it for uh, this tutorial. Well, I say it wasn't really a tutorial. It was more an introduction on how uh, I built my PN, uh, pan and tilt uh, systems. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Ask in the comment section below. And like I said, in the next tutorial, uh, we're going to look at the actual code that uh, is on the Nano right here. Uh, let me put this camera up a little bit. There we go. So we're going to look at the code that's on the uh, Nano right here and see how that all works. Uh, so basically we're reading uh, the receiver, the RC receiver, depending on the values we're getting, uh, we're doing a motion, uh, would it be up, down, left, right, and the zoom function also. That is achieved by using a cheap uh, LNC um, remote that I got from Amazon. So, once again, guys, the next video is going to be about the programming of all this and how all this works. So stay tuned for that. Should be coming out tomorrow or on Saturday. So once again, guys, my name is Ivan from BennyBits.com. Take care.